it's officially confirmed that incline pressing does work the upper chest more compared to flats and declines. Is anyone surprised? The best bodybuilders have been saying this for decades and anecdotally, we've all felt the same thing. So in today's video, I'll be sharing some incline pressing secrets with some unique gems. The first thing I want to address is the angle itself. On the extreme sides, we have the super low incline, which is typically a flat bench propped up on a box. And then there's the high incline, usually 60 degrees. In both cases, they're probably subpar for upper chest. Either you're going to feel too much sternal pecs or anterior delts. So in truth, the sweet spot for 90% of you will vary between 30 and 45 degrees. And that is based off limb lengths, thickness, and how you lie down on the bench. That said, if we go strictly by EMG, then technically 45 degrees is number one. But if you watch this video by Dr. Mike Iswatil, you might completely question the findings. So how about we just look at the biomechanics instead? What matters most is the upper chest being rather perpendicular to the line of force. In this case being straight gravity. In other words, does it look like you're doing an incline press? It shouldn't resemble a flatter position where the chest is way higher than the chin. Pay attention to the size of your ribcage and sternal angle because that changes the form completely. Because some people will use powerlifting style form, basically the same technique they use on their flat, on their incline. Excessive arching and retraction of the scapula, which levels out the torso angle. So, on paper, they might be doing a 45 degree press, but in actuality, they're a half slot or full slot down on that adjustable bench. And obviously the same holds true for the lower angles, but it's even worse because now you might not be biased enough. Whereas if you were high and brought it down to a spot that actually works better for your build, you're going to be okay. And I think this explains why some people didn't respond the best to the 30 degree angle is because they were cheating themselves. And this is very common in fitness influencers who want to display their strength. For some reason, their incline is similar to their flat. How is that possible? I'll tell you what, it's not specialization. It's not because their upper chest is so much more overdeveloped. It's because they're using incorrect technique. So always check yourself, be honest, film your sets, because that's the only way that you can truly determine which angle is best. That said, I can add even more nuance by stating you should do 30 plus 45 degree inclines, even if one feels better for you, because you'll minimize overuse, have different load selection, and have different carryover effects, which is especially important for strength athletes. If you want a bigger flat bench, those low angles might suit your fancy. Whereas if your vertical pressing is lacking, use a higher incline. Not to mention the fact that if you're at a commercial gym where dumbbells are limited and you're maxing them out for high repetitions on that lower position, well then isn't it smart to raise the height? Progressive range of motion works in reverse as well. So that's why I believe this debate is largely irrelevant because smart lifters will mix in both. Secondly, for best biasing the upper chest, we need to use the correct arm path. By looking at anatomy chart, it becomes clear that the direction of the fibers run up diagonally. So if we're converging the upper arm, how should that be? Certainly not like internally rotated half repping gym bros, pull an athlete next minus the fake weights and draw some lines on the upper chest fibers. That is the direction you need to press in. You want to be pressing down here, not here, which can put a lot more stress on the shoulder joints and coracobrachialis. It's all about being properly lined up. This isn't to say you won't make gains, just that it's terribly inefficient, more dangerous, and produces objectively inferior results. So why even bother? Now the thing is, your grip width plays a role in this. If using a straight bar and going beyond the rings, you might find that it's basically impossible to have a proper elbow tuck. So what I found is that incline pressing practically requires a closer grip either being shoulder width apart or slightly outside of it. Of course, doing this will further emphasize the triceps and increase range of motion, but that's not a bad thing. This yields better safety while getting more out of less weight. Now, I should point out that this hack still isn't optimal per se. 
In reality, using dumbbells is always going to be the preferred choice for incline pressing. Since now you'll be flawlessly lined up and can micro adjust while you're pressing. So it 100% feels more natural and better on the upper chest. That I will admit, especially with those higher angles. If I'm using 45 degrees, I'm gonna pick dumbbells nine out of 10 times. Now, if you want one more hack, I definitely recommend using the angled Swiss bar for incline pressing. This is hands down the number one bilateral variation for overloading the length and position. Not only are we really well lined up, just like the dumbbells, but because inclines have extended range of motion by design, getting out of pronation makes it easier on the shoulder joints, which a lot of guys complain about. So if you couldn't handle, say, the higher positions before, you might be able to now. So if your gym has one, these are really worth considering. Otherwise, you can always use the regular Swiss bar. It's still good, just that your arm path will be a few degrees off from optimal. Finally, let's talk about working the shortened position. Barbells and dumbbells emphasize the mid to lengthen position, which is generally viewed as superior for hypertrophy. That's what all the data is pointing to. Now, does this mean we don't do any squeeze-based motions? No, not doing so would be minimalist and leaving potential gains on the table, possibly 10 to 50%. No one can really quantify what that is. And if your upper chest is truly lagging, why not experiment with further squeezing it? So there's a few ways you can do this. The easiest would be a hammer strength incline press, which converges into the squeeze. Very simple. You can use that as a finisher exercise or even start off since muscles are weakest in the shortened position. Alternatively, you can do dumbbell pressing with a band behind you. This way there's going to be peak tension at the top. Or you can do a low to high cable crossover, which has been the typical recommendation up until now. That's a very simple way of isolating the squeeze. Though, I'll be honest, there's actually a better way in 2022. And that is the clavicular press around popularized by coach Kasim creator of N1 Education. This involves having the cable be slightly behind you and to your side, such that the cable is even with your form and you press around. By the way, make sure the cables are set low to not bias the external pecs. Also, feel free to twist your body a bit as those weights get heavier, which you may naturally do anyway. So, you're going beyond the traditional squeeze of just being here. You're getting the complete adduction of the humerus like you can't shorten your pecs any further so if you're going to pick one movement this is unbeatable and the best part is you're not limited by your bottom strength because straight arms will involve your front delts a lot more and we're not trying to hit that position in the first place this is strictly to get the squeeze in so the bent arms really allow you to focus on that plus you can use some really heavy weights so loading potential is never going to be a problem stability is on point and it's a rather simple exercise to execute. No different from you doing any other cable motion. With that said, you should be all set. This is a super simple video. Pay attention to the angles, always follow the fibers, and mix in a short position exercise. That's it. I'm done. Hope you guys enjoyed this segment, and I want to hear your tips on further developing the upper chest. Let's hear it. I'll talk to you all next time.